Hey, hey, I'm Naya. Welcome back to the channel. So today I figured we would just go over a couple master duel things that I've seen in the past couple of days as it's been out and a couple tips, a couple important things to note and to remember. And I will also share with you my prank it's deck profile that's right now I'm only in like the sil silver tier because I'm not exactly grinding as often as I should. I was thinking of streaming my grind more. So if you're down for me streaming on YouTube more, you know, I'm very much excited for that. So if you want me to do it, let me know down in the comments. I'll probably do it regardless, but I would still love your opinion anyway. Um, so yeah, this deck has been performing really well. I'm very satisfied with the build. Uh, so far, I've been undefeated. So yeah, I think I'm doing something correctly, right? <laughs> so first, let's just go over a couple tips. So the first important thing to note would be to grind solo first. And I know how tedious it is. I know how annoying it is, but just go through just a couple solo chapters. The most important one would be the first one because you get a couple cards for free, essentially, just by completing the tutorials and after, after going through a couple of duels. So you get Monster Reborn, you get Regeki and you get Rhoda which in itself is worth it to go through that entire process. And also you want to grind it out for basically until you have enough gems to get enough packs to build at least one deck. Because after you go on rated, you will be able to receive much more gems and rewards. So at that point, it's not really important to grind the solo mode anymore, but it's still an option for you because it has like... I don't know, probably at least 10 chapters to go through. So you can still receive sort of free gems. And also another tip would be to grind it out like this entire solo mode, if you can, if you have the nerves for. Um, I have not, you know, exactly mustered up the nerves for that just yet, but I'm, I think I might because if you get enough gems right now at this point and after completing the actual like ranked mode as well, you will be able to invest your gems into staples. And we don't know that yet, but they might increase the rarities or the prices or make gems less uh, accessible after the game has been out for some time. So you might want to invest in all of those th things as soon as possible. And the staples would be basically anything from the pots to the hand traps to some of the generic traps. All of the generic stuff basically has been printed, well, printed, as a super rare so you can get your hands on on most of these things and then all of the ultra rares which the extra deck monsters most of them are ultras of course because they need to you know have their rarities and sort of stuff that you want to invest your gems somewhere right and that's going to be the extra deck ultras and how you can get to these obviously besides just crafting them yourself would be the packs so if you look at the three most basic packs you buy of course you get the one where you can enhance your strategy that you picked your structure deck that you picked at the very beginning of the game and then you have a like a regular pack that has like six thousand cards or something basically everything uh, and also a very meta pack that defines the meta i guess with all of the cards that like are just generically good and they are accessible in that pack in particular. So if you want to invest in something, I would recommend investing in the... So if you look at here, I'll have a something playing of me scrolling through the packs. You want to invest in the leftmost and the rightmost pack the most because you, ha you have like a lot of chances to pull something that you either want or can dismantle. So when it comes to dismantling cards, obviously you dismantle three to then invest those, um, I guess that currency into another card. So three for one. And you can always do that for any card that you might want. If you pull it even better, I pulled two droplets, not to flex at all, just a little bit. <laughs> I pulled two droplets, which was very dope. But yeah, if you don't pull it, you might want to craft it and you know get it from packs also because you can invest in secret packs and the secret packs sort of unlock themselves as you craft a specific card from that strategy so you might want to uh, craft something like a prank it monster and a prank it uh, themed secret pack is going to unlock itself for me that's what it happened that's why i'm giving this as an example because obviously i built prank it and all of a lot of the other stuff is going to unlock itself for example today i crafted lancia and an artifact pack unlocked itself and as it makes itself available to you you usually would receive one free pack and then you have more options to pull that strategy specifically 
right from the pack you have like more chances of actually opening those cards but an important reminder would be that this pack for whatever reason disappears after 24 hours so there's that i have no idea what i mean i can i have a a sense of why they might do that obviously so that you invest either money or the gems and grind it out and actually play the game even more but still is it really necessary for them to put like a time cap on it i don't think so something else you might want to buy well yeah you you, you really might want to buy that um would be the bundles because you actually you actually get the packs the master packs as they're called you get all of them that you would buy at some point anyway probably but you also get an important card for meta for you know a generic card i should say so ash lightning storm or judgment you only get one copy but then you're one step closer because they are printed as ultras and obviously ultras are less accessible so you might want to invest into bundles another reason why is because usually for 10 packs of meta packs master pack whatever for 10 packs you would need to pay 1000 gems and for the bundles you only pay 750 so there's also an option you know and the last thing would be to put everything in your deck as you are building it uh, just because the cards that you don't have in at the moment you know they're going to be grayed out so you know by doing that you know that you need to get those cards because some of them might be common or rare and usually by purchasing packs you get extra commons and rares as it is IRL so you'll just be able to dismantle those and invest into your I guess normal normal cards no, not rarity bumped cards and you just know it you know you have everything in front of you you know which cards you still need to get all right so now we're just gonna go over my prank is deck list to wrap this video up and that's gonna be it so the build I have currently is this one that you see in front of you. I have every single prank kit at three and also I just realized that I do not have this sorted whatsoever. So shame on me for that, but um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't bother because you cannot do it A to Z like you would do in a dueling book. And at that point I was like, no, I'm not really, <laughs> I'm not really into sorting my cards right now. So if you look at the list, um, we have prank kids every single one at three um just because i also play poly uh, i only have two polymerization in because i will always swear by only two polymerization you do not need more if you have three pandemonium and you also have a lot of other cards like maxi for example that sort of gets you to that sort of gets you going because prank kits in and of itself is just a strategy where you only need one card at the end of the day and another thing to note I play polymer polymerization, I like it. You do not necessarily need to play it because the sort of the entire point of going into Toad as soon as possible would be to play around Nibiru and something that really hinders you, like, I don't know, Ghost Bell on Duro or Bow Wow, stuff like that. But not everybody has it because let's face it, you know, it is an ultra Nibiru, for example. So if someone did in fact invest into a different hand trap, you know, I have not been hit with Nibiru yet. Probably will be, but you know, just saying. So we have every single prank kit, two polymerization for that. And then for the, uh, the prank kit engine would be three field spell, three pandemonium, and one pranks. This is sort of the IRL ratio. And then the hand traps, just three ash and three max. And uh, I have two Nibiru. I just figured it's the most generic one. Uh, I have not used it yet. But, you know, drew it a couple times and it was just there. Usually I banished it off of Roxy's because legit I have not faced a deck where I needed to Nibiru or I won without needing to Nibiru. So there's that. Just put in something generic, whatever you want, whatever you have access to. If you might want to invest into something like Valor for a different strategy, um, just put that in. It's, it's all good. Uh, and then as for the sort of flex spots... I have one Reborn because I got it from the solo mode. I have one Lightning Storm because I pulled it. <laughs> and then I have one Twister to go alongside that. Um, if you don't have that exact ratio because it is very random, I would still put a back row removal in just because it is only one game, no sighting. And I honestly do not want to lose to like a random whatever back row deck, Floodgate, something that I just really dislike. I don't want to lose to that, so. I have the back row removal for that. Also, Lightning Storm is cool against the strategy that puts up a lot of monsters as well, since, since it has the ability to pop monsters. And then one uh, Chalice, 
uh, because I have three droplets also, and I just put one chalice in as well. So the one chalice, two Nibiru, could just be three Veiler or three chalice or three dark rulers. So whatever you feel like you might need. Although dark ruler, that's very much like, you know, it can be a break if you go first and with only one game and no sighting, it does feel a bit weird, but that's that's also still an option. And then call, two called by just because Ash hurts you. And if you can afford to play two, since it's a different format, you might want to play too. Uh, and also to skill join because for whatever reason, skill join is at three, which is cool. I realize a lot of my ratios might seem weird with the one of Bakru removal, two of Nibiru, one of Chalice, and two of skill drain. And for that, the only thing I have to say is this. That's how I like it because I, I'm able to fit everything in without feeling like I might clog on some stuff. And um, that's the only reason why, you know, I don't mind the two off ratio if it's cards that are not necessarily part of my engine, but still do a lot against different types of decks. And at this point, I'm starting to repeat myself, but it is only one game. So you might want to be prepared for everything. And skill gen in particular in prank hits, you do not care about it. <laughs> and it's amazing to me, you know, I have never played it IRL, never ran it obviously since it's at one, but right now as I'm starting to, you know, open it a lot, I can see how well it works with prank kids and I feel like they are very, like a very dangerous deck to play against. Uh, and if we go cl quickly go over the extra deck because it's very basic, one rocket, one washer, uh, I think I have one butler here. But I did, um, yesterday during testing, I did swap out one doodle for one butler, but just to test it. That's why I still put the old build in, because it's whatever you want. Two butler, two doodle, one butler, three doodle, it's whatever. Sometimes I felt, I felt the need for an extra butler IRL, so I just figured I would put one in on here as well, just to test essentially. So that's also an option I should point out. One toad, three meow, because we can have three meow. So three doodle I mentioned, a bow wow unicorn together with axes that's there at the end, a boral sword because I pulled it. I felt like I want to run it, although I am testing a phoenix now, nightmare phoenix, and I like it a lot. So you might want to put phoenix maybe over boral sword because I honestly do like it. What I like to do is I just like to uh, link it together with a doodle that's usually in the meow meow pointer or like a bow wow pointer, whatever I can do at some point, I will co-link them so I can also draw, also pop and then just pop off and make access code and win. That's the strategy. Maybe, maybe consider playing Phoenix. And of course the link four, because I like it a lot. You can do it in the combo if you draw two names and a pandemonium or get, get access to the pandemonium. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Hopefully I went over everything uh, clearly and the entire thing wasn't too long. And yeah, if you enjoyed, uh, make sure to give me a like and a sub. Check out Discord, my new Discord. I always mention it in the last couple of videos, but seriously, check the link down below. Also Twitch. And let me know if you want me to stream more also here on YouTube because I did stream once yesterday, the connection was horrible, which I will work on. <laughs> I will most likely stream from this room from now on. And I would truly like to stream whether this, you know, is Master Duel, Dueling Book or just chatting with you guys. Um, I think I would honestly enjoy it. So do let me know. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.